Chapters 8 through 14 of the Gospel according to Matthew. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Mark Penfold. The Gospel according to Matthew from the Weymouth New Testament in Modern Speech. Translated by Richard Francis Weymouth. Chapters 8 through 14. Chapter 8 Upon descending from the hill country, he was followed by immense crowds. And a leper came to him, and throwing himself at his feet, said, Sir, if only you are willing, you are able to cleanse me. So Jesus put out his hand and touched him, and said, I am willing, be cleansed. Instantly he was cleansed from his leprosy, and Jesus said to him, Be careful to tell no one, but go and show yourself to the priest, and offer the gift which Moses appointed as evidence for them. After his entry into Capernaum, a captain came to him and entreated him. Sir, he said, my servant at home is lying ill with paralysis and is suffering great pain. I will come and cure him, said Jesus. Sir, replied the captain, I am not a fit person to receive you under my roof. Merely say the word, and my servant will be cured. For I myself am also under authority, and have soldiers under me. To one I say, Go, and he goes. To another, Come, and he comes. And to my slave, Do this or that, and he does it. Jesus listened to this reply, and was astonished, and said to the people following him, I solemnly tell you, that in no Israelite have I found faith as great as this. And I tell you that many will come from the east and from the west, and will recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of the heavens, while the natural heirs of the kingdom will be driven out into the darkness outside. There will be the weeping aloud and the gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said to the captain, Go. And just as you have believed, so be it for you. And the servant recovered precisely at that time. After this, Jesus went to the house of Peter, whose mother-in-law he found ill in bed with fever. He touched her hand, and the fever left her, and then she rose and waited upon him. In the evening many demoniacs were brought to him, and with a word he expelled the demons, and he cured all the sick in order that this prediction of the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. He took on him our weaknesses, and bore the burden of our diseases. Seeing great crowds about him, Jesus had given directions to cross to the other side of the lake, when a scribe came and said to him, Teacher, I will follow you wherever you go. Foxes have holes, replied Jesus, and birds have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Another of the disciples said to him, Sir, allow me first to go and bury my father. Follow me, said Jesus, and leave the dead to bury their own dead. Then he went on board a fishing boat, and his disciples followed him. But suddenly there arose a great storm on the lake, so that the waves threatened to engulf the boat. But he was asleep. So they came and woke him, crying, Master, save us, we are drowning! Why are you so easily frightened, he replied, you men of little faith? Then he rose and reproved the winds and the waves, and there was a perfect calm. And the men, filled with amazement, exclaimed, What kind of man is this? For the very winds and waves obey him! On his arrival at the other side, in the country of the Gadarenes, there met him two men possessed by demons coming from among the tombs. They were so dangerously fierce that no one was able to pass that way. They cried aloud, What hast thou to do with us, thou son of God? Hast thou come here to torment us before the time? Now at some distance from them a vast herd of swine were feeding. So the demons entreated him. If thou drivest us out, they said, Send us into the herd of swine. Go, he replied. 
Then they came out from the men and went into the swine, whereupon the entire herd instantly rushed down the cliff into the lake and perished in the water. The swineherds fled and went and told the whole story in the town, including what had happened to the demoniacs. So at once the whole population came out to meet Jesus, and when they saw him, they besought him to leave their country. Chapter 9 Accordingly he went on board, and crossing over, came to his own town. Here they brought to him a paralytic, lying on a bed. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralytic, Take courage, my child, your sins are pardoned. Such language is impious, said some of the scribes among themselves. Knowing their thoughts, Jesus said, Why are you cherishing evil thoughts in your hearts? Why, which is easier, to say, Your sins are pardoned, or to say, Rise up and walk? But to prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to pardon sins, he then says to the paralytic, Rise, and take up your bed, and go home. And he got up, and went off home. And the crowds were awestruck when they saw it, and ascribed the glory to God who had entrusted such power to a man. Passing on thence, Jesus saw a man called Matthew sitting at the toll office, and said to him, follow me and he arose and followed him and while he was reclining at table a large number of tax gatherers and notorious sinners were of the party with jesus and his disciples the pharisees noticed this and they inquired of his disciples why does your teacher eat with the tax gatherers and notorious sinners he heard the question and replied it is not men in good health who require a doctor but the sick but go and learn what this means. It is mercy that I desire, not sacrifice. For I did not come to appeal to the righteous, but to sinners. At that time John's disciples came and asked Jesus, Why do we and the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? Can the bridegroom's party mourn, he replied, as long as the bridegroom is with them? But other days will come, when the bridegroom has been taken from them, and then they will fast. No one ever mends an old cloak with a patch of newly woven cloth, otherwise the patch put on would tear away some of the old, and a worse hole would be made. Nor do people pour new wine into old wineskins, otherwise the skins would split, the wine would escape, and the skins be destroyed. But they put new wine into fresh skins, and both are saved. While he was thus speaking, a ruler came up and profoundly bowing said my daughter is just dead but come and put your hand upon her and she will return to life and jesus rose and followed him as did also his disciples but a woman who for twelve years had been afflicted with hemorrhage came behind him and touched the tassel of his cloak for she said to herself if i but touch his cloak i shall be cured and Jesus turned and saw her, and said, Take courage, daughter, your faith has cured you. And the woman was restored to health from that moment. Entering the ruler's house, Jesus saw the flute players and the crowd loudly wailing, and he said, Go out of the room, the little girl is not dead, but asleep. And they laughed at him. When, however, the place was cleared of the crowd, Jesus went in, and on his taking the little girl by the hand, she rose up. And the report of this spread throughout all that district. As Jesus passed on, two blind men followed him, shouting and saying, Pity us, son of David! And when he had gone indoors, they came to him. Do you believe that I can do this? he asked them. Yes, sir, they replied. So he touched their eyes and said, according to your faith let it be to you then their eyes were opened and assuming a stern tone jesus said to them be careful to let no one know but they went out and published his fame in all that district and as they were leaving his presence a dumb demoniac was brought to him when the demon was expelled the dumb man could speak and the crowds exclaimed in astonishment 
Never was such a thing seen in Israel. But the Pharisees maintained, It is by the power of the prince of the demons that he drives out the demons. And Jesus continued his circuits through all the towns and the villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every kind of disease and infirmity. And when he saw the crowds, he was touched with pity for them, because they were distressed, and were fainting on the ground like sheep which have no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is abundant, but the reapers are few. Therefore entreat the owner of the harvest to send out reapers into his fields. Chapter 10 Then he called to him his twelve disciples, and gave them authority over foul spirits, to drive them out, and to cure every kind of disease and infirmity. Now the names of the twelve apostles were these. First, Simon, called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zabdi, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax-gatherer, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanian, and Judas the Iscariot, who also betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent on a mission, after giving them their instructions. Go not, he said, among the Gentiles, and enter no Samaritan town, but instead of that, go to the lost sheep of Israel's race, and as you go, preach and say, The kingdom of the heavens is close at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead to life, cleanse lepers, drive out demons. You have received without payment, give without payment. Provide no gold, nor even silver nor copper to carry in your pockets. No bag for your journey, nor change of linen, nor shoes, nor stick, for the laborer deserves his food. Whatever town or village you enter, inquire for some good man, and make his house your home till you leave the place. When you enter the house, salute it, and if the house deserves it, the peace you invoke shall come upon it. If not, your peace shall return to you. And whoever refuses to receive you, or even to listen to your message, as you leave that house or town, shake off the very dust from your feet. I solemnly tell you that it will be more endurable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah on the day of judgment than for that town. Remember, it is I who am sending you out as sheep into the midst of wolves. Prove yourselves as sagacious as serpents and as innocent as doves. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to appear before Sanhedrins, and will flog you in their synagogues, and you will even be put on trial before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness to them and to the Gentiles. But when they have delivered you up, have no anxiety as to how you shall speak or what you shall say, for at that very time it shall be given you what to say. For it is not you who will speak, it will be the spirit of your father speaking through you. Brother will betray brother to death, and father child, and children will rise against their own parents and will put them to death, and you will be objects of universal hatred because you are called by my name. But he who holds out to the end, he will be saved. Whenever they persecute you in one town, escape to the next, for I solemnly tell you that you will not have gone the round of all the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The learner is never superior to his teacher, and the servant is never superior to his master. Enough for the learner to be on a level with his teacher, and for the servant to be on a level with his master. If they have called the master of the house Baalzebul, how much more will they slander his servants? Fear them not. However, there is nothing veiled which will not be uncovered, nor secret which will not become known. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the light, and what is whispered into your ear, proclaim upon the roofs of the houses. And do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in Gehenna. Do not two sparrows sell for a halfpenny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's leave. But as for you, 
the very hairs on your heads are all numbered. Away, then, with fear! You are more precious than a multitude of sparrows. Every man who acknowledges me before men, I also will acknowledge before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever disowns me before men, I also will disown before my Father who is in heaven. Do not suppose that I came to bring peace to the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's own family will be his foes. Any one who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and any one who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And any one who does not take up his cross and follow where I lead is not worthy of me. To save your life is to lose it, and to lose your life for my sake is to save it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. Every one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and every one who receives a righteous man because he is a righteous man will receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water to drink because he is a disciple, I solemnly tell you that he will not lose his reward. Chapter 11 When Jesus had concluded his instructions to his twelve disciples, he left in order to teach and to proclaim his message in the neighboring towns. Now John had heard in prison about the Christ's doings, and he sent some of his disciples to inquire, Are you the coming one, or is it a different person that we are to expect? Go and report to John what you see and hear, replied Jesus. Blind eyes receive sight, and cripples walk. Lepers are cleansed, and deaf ears hear. The dead are raised to life, and the poor have the good news proclaimed to them. And blessed is every one who does not stumble and fall because of my claims. When the messengers had taken their leave, Jesus proceeded to say to the multitude concerning John, What did you go out into the desert to gaze at? A reed waving in the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man luxuriously dressed? Those who wear luxurious clothes are to be found in king's palaces. But why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and far more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, See, I am sending my messenger before thy face, and he will make thy road ready before thee. I solemnly tell you that among all of woman, born no greater has ever been raised up than John the Baptist. Yet one who is of lower rank in the kingdom of the heavens is greater than he. But from the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of the heavens has been suffering violent assault, and the violent have been seizing it by force, for all the prophets and the law taught until John. And, if you are willing to receive it, he is the Elijah who was to come. Listen, everyone who has ears! But to what shall I compare the present generation? It is like children sitting in the open places who call to their playmates. We have played the flute to you, they say. And you have not danced. We have sung dirges, and you have not beaten your breasts. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they exclaim, See this man, given to gluttony and tippling, and a friend of tax gatherers and notorious sinners. And yet wisdom is vindicated by her actions. Then began he to upbraid the towns where most of his mighty works had been done, because they had not repented. Alas for thee, Chorazin, he cried, alas for thee, Bethsaida, for had the mighty works been done in Tyre and Sidon, which have been done in both of you, they would long ere now have repented, covered with sackcloth and ashes. Only I tell you that it will be more endurable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, Shalt thou be exalted even to heaven? Even to Hades shalt thou descend. For had the mighty works been done in Sodom which have been done in thee, it would have remained until now. Only I tell you all that it will be more endurable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for thee. 
about that time jesus exclaimed i heartily praise thee father lord of heaven and of earth that thou hast hidden these things from sages and men of discernment and hast unveiled them to babes yes father for such has been thy gracious will all things have been handed over to me by my father and no one fully knows the son except the father nor does any one fully know the father except the son and all to whom the son chooses to reveal him come to me all you toiling and burdened ones and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for it is good to bear my yoke and my burden is light chapter 12 about that time jesus passed on the sabbath through the wheat fields and his disciples became hungry and began to gather ears of wheat and eat them but the pharisees saw it and said to him look your disciples are doing what the law forbids them to do on the sabbath have you never read he replied what david did when he and his men were hungry how he entered the house of god and ate the presented loaves which it was not lawful for him or his men to eat nor for any except the priests and have you not read in the law how on the sabbath the priests in the temple break the sabbath without incurring guilt but i tell you that there is here that which is greater than the temple and if you knew what this means it is mercy i desire not sacrifice you would not have condemned those who are without guilt for the son of man is the lord of the sabbath departing thence he went to their synagogue where there was a man with a shriveled arm and they questioned him is it right to cure people on the sabbath their intention was to bring a charge against him which of you is there he replied who if he has but a single sheep and it falls into a hole on the sabbath will not lay hold of it and lift it out is not a man however far superior to a sheep therefore it is right to do good on the sabbath then he said to the man stretch out your arm and he stretched it out and it was restored quite sound like the other but the pharisees after leaving the synagogue consulted together against him how they might destroy him aware of this jesus departed elsewhere and a great number of people followed him all of whom he cured but he gave them strict injunctions not to blaze abroad his doings that those words of the prophet isaiah might be fulfilled this is my servant whom i have chosen my dearly loved one in whom my soul takes pleasure i will put my spirit upon him and he will announce justice to the nations he will not wrangle or raise his voice nor will his voice be heard in the broad ways a crushed reed he will not utterly break nor will he quench the still smouldering wick until he has led on justice to victory and on his name shall the nations rest their hopes at that time a demoniac was brought to him blind and dumb and he cured him so that the dumb man could speak and see and the crowds of people were all filled with amazement and said can this be the son of david the pharisees heard it and said this man only expels demons by the power of baalzebul the prince of demons knowing their thoughts he said to them every kingdom in which civil war has raged suffers desolation and every city or house in which there is internal strife will be brought low and if satan is expelling satan he has begun to make war on himself how therefore shall his kingdom last and if it is by baalzebul's power that i expel the demons by whose power do your disciples expel them they therefore shall be your judges but if it is by the power of the spirit of god that i expel the demons it is evident that the kingdom of god has come upon you again how can any one enter the house of a strong man and carry off his goods unless first of all he masters and secures the strong man then he will ransack his house the man who is not with me is against me and he who is not gathering with me is scattering abroad this is why i tell you that men may find forgiveness for every other sin and impious word but that for impious speaking against the holy spirit they shall find no forgiveness and whoever shall speak against the son of man may obtain forgiveness but whoever speaks against the holy spirit neither in this nor in the coming age shall he obtain forgiveness 
either grant the tree to be wholesome and its fruit wholesome, or the tree poisonous and its fruit poisonous, for the tree is known by its fruit. O viper's brood, how can you speak what is good when you are evil? For it is from the overflow of the heart that the mouth speaks. A good man from his good store produces good things, and a bad man from his bad store produces bad things. But I tell you that for every careless word that men shall speak, they will be held accountable on the day of judgment. For each of you by his words shall be justified, or by his words shall be condemned. Then he was accosted by some of the scribes and of the Pharisees, who said, Teacher, we wish to see a sign given by you. <sighs> Wicked and faithless generation, he replied. They clamor for a sign, but none shall be given to them except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For just as Jonah was three days in the sea monster's belly, so will the Son of Man be three days in the heart of the earth. There will stand up men of Nineveh at the judgment together with the present generation, and will condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah, and mark, there is one greater than Jonah here. The queen of the south will awake at the judgment together with the present generation, and will condemn it, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and mark, there is one greater than Solomon here. No sooner, however, has the foul spirit gone out of the man, than he roams about in places where there is no water, seeking rest but finding none. Then he says, I will return to my house that I left, and he comes and finds it unoccupied, swept clean, and in good order. Then he goes and brings back with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they come in and dwell there, and in the end that man's condition becomes worse than it was at first. So will it be also with the present wicked generation. While he was still addressing the people, his mother and his brothers were standing on the edge of the crowd desiring to speak to him. So someone told him, Your mother and your brothers are standing outside and desire to speak to you. Who is my mother? he said to the man, and who are my brothers? And pointing to his disciples, he added, See here are my mother and my brothers. To obey my father who is in heaven, that is to be my brother and my sister and my mother. Chapter 13 That same day Jesus had left the house and was sitting on the shore of the lake, when a vast multitude of people crowded round him, he therefore went on board a boat and sat there while all the people stood on the shore. He then spoke many things to them in figurative language. The sower goes out, he said, to sow. As he sows, some of the seed falls by the wayside, and the birds come and peck it up. Some falls on rocky ground, where it has but scanty soil. It quickly shows itself above ground, because it has no depth of earth. But when the sun is risen, it is scorched by the heat, and through having no root, it withers up. Some falls among the thorns, but the thorns spring up and stifle it, but a portion falls upon good ground, and gives a return, some a hundred for one, some sixty, some thirty. Listen, every one who has ears. And his disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in figurative language? Because, he replied, while to you it is granted to know the secrets of the kingdom of the heavens, to them it is not. For whoever has, to him more shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But whoever has not, from him even what he has shall be taken away. I speak to them in figurative language for this reason, that while looking they do not see, and while hearing they neither hear nor understand. And in regard to them the prophecy of Isaiah is receiving signal fulfillment, you will hear and hear, and by no means understand, and you will look and look, and by no means see. For this people's mind is stupefied, their hearing has become dull, and their eyes they have closed, to prevent their ever seeing with their eyes, or hearing with their ears, or understanding with their minds, and turning back so that I might heal them. But as for you, blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For I solemnly tell you that many prophets and holy men have longed to see the sights you see, and have not seen them, and to hear the words you hear, and have not heard them. To you, then, I will explain the parable of the sower. When a man hears the message concerning the kingdom, and does not understand it, the evil one comes and catches away what has been sown in his heart. 
this is he who has received the seed by the roadside. He who has received the seed on the rocky ground is the man who hears the message and immediately receives it with joy. It has struck no root, however, within him. He continues for a time, but when suffering comes or persecution because of the message, he at once stumbles and falls. He who has received the seed among the thorns is the man who hears the message, but the cares of the present age and the delusions of riches quite stifle the message, and it becomes unfruitful. But he who has received the seed on good ground is he who hears and understands. Such hearers give a return, and yield one a hundred for one, another sixty, another thirty. Another parable he put before them. The kingdom of the heavens, he said, may be compared to a man who has sown good seed in his field. But during the night his enemy comes, and over the first seed he sows darnel among the wheat, and goes away. But when the blade shoots up and the grain is formed, then appears the darnel also. So the farmer's men come and ask him, Sir, was it not good seed that you sowed on your land? Where then does the darnel come from? Some enemy has done this, he said. Shall we go and collect it? the men inquire. No, he replied, for fear that while collecting the darnel you should at the same time root up the wheat with it. Leave both to grow together until the harvest, and at harvest time I will direct the reapers, collect the darnel first, and make it up into bundles to burn it, but bring all the wheat into my barn. Another parable he put before them. The kingdom of the heavens, he said, is like a mustard seed, which a man takes and sows in his ground. It is the smallest of all seeds, and yet when full grown it is larger than any herb, and forms a tree, so that the birds come and build in its branches. Another parable he spoke to them. The kingdom of the heavens, he said, is like yeast which a woman takes and buries in a bushel of flour, for it to work there till the whole mass has risen. All this Jesus spoke to the people in figurative language, and except in figurative language he spoke nothing to them. In fulfillment of the saying of the prophet, I will open my mouth in figurative language, I will utter things kept hidden since the creation of all things. When he had dismissed the people and had returned to the house, his disciples came to him with a request. Explain to us the parable of the darnel sown in the field. The sower of the good seed, he replied, is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed, these are the sons of the kingdom. The darnel, the sons of the evil one. The enemy who sows the darnel is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age. The reapers are the angels. As then the darnel is collected together and burnt up with fire, so will it be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will commission his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all causes of sin and all who violate his laws. And these they will throw into the fiery furnace. There will be the weeping aloud and the gnashing of teeth. Then will the righteous shine out like the sun in their father's kingdom. Listen, everyone who has ears. The kingdom of the heavens is like treasure buried in the open country, which a man finds but buries again, and in his joy about it goes and sells all he has and buys that piece of ground. Again, the kingdom of the heavens is like a jewel merchant who is in quest of choice pearls. He finds one most costly pearl. He goes away, and though it costs all he has, he buys it. Again the kingdom of the heavens is like a drawnet let down into the sea, which encloses fish of all sorts. When full, they haul it up on the beach, and sit down and collect the good fish in baskets, while the worthless they throw away. So will it be at the close of the age. The angels will go forth, and separate the wicked from among the righteous, and will throw them into the fiery furnace. There will be the weeping aloud, and the gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? he asked. Yes, they said. Therefore, he said, remember that every scribe well trained for the kingdom of the heavens is like a householder who brings out of his storehouse new things and old. Jesus concluded this series of parables and then departed. And he came into his own country and proceeded to teach in their synagogue, so that they were filled with astonishment and exclaimed, where did he obtain such wisdom and these wondrous powers? Is not this the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? And are not his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judah? 
and his sisters? Are they not all living here among us? Where then did he get all this? So they turned angrily away from him. But Jesus said to them, There is no prophet left without honor except in his own country and among his own family. And he performed but few mighty deeds there because of their want of faith. Chapter 14 About that time Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus, and he said to his courtiers, This is John the Baptist. He has come back to life, and that is why these miraculous powers are working in him. For Herod had arrested John, and had put him in chains and imprisoned him for the sake of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife, because John had persistently said to him, It is not lawful for you to have her and he would have liked to put him to death, but was afraid of the people because they regarded John as a prophet. But when Herod's birthday came, the daughter of Herodias danced before all the company, and so pleased Herod, that with an oath he promised to give her whatever she asked. So she, instigated by her mother, said, Give me here on a dish the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply vexed, yet because of his repeated oath and of the guests at his table, he ordered it to be given her, and he sent and beheaded John in the prison. The head was brought on a dish and given to the young girl, and she took it to her mother. Then John's disciples went and removed the body and buried it, and came and informed Jesus. Upon receiving these tidings, Jesus went away by boat to an uninhabited and secluded district, but the people heard of it and followed him in crowds from the towns by land. So Jesus went out and saw an immense multitude, and felt compassion for them, and cured those of them who were out of health. But when evening was come, the disciples came to him and said, This is an uninhabited place, and the best of the day is now gone. Send the people away to go into the villages and buy something to eat. They need not go away, replied Jesus. You yourselves must give them something to eat. We have nothing here, they said, but five loaves and a couple of fish. Bring them here to me, he said. And he told all the people to sit down on the grass. Then he took the five loaves and the two fish, and after looking up to heaven and blessing them, he broke up the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples distributed them to the people. So all ate and were fully satisfied. The broken portions that remained over they gathered up, filling twelve baskets. Those who had eaten were about five thousand adult men, without reckoning women and children. Immediately afterwards he made the disciples go on board the boat and cross to the opposite shore, leaving him to dismiss the people. When he had done this, he climbed the hill to pray in solitude. Night came on, and he was there alone. Meanwhile the boat was far out on the lake, buffeted and tossed by the waves, the wind being adverse. But towards daybreak he went to them, walking over the waves. When the disciples saw him walking on the waves, they were greatly alarmed. It is a spirit! they exclaimed, and they cried out with terror. But instantly Jesus spoke to them and said, There is no danger, it is I. Do not be afraid. Master, answered Peter, if it is you, bid me to come to you upon the water. Come, said Jesus. Then Peter climbed down from the boat and walked upon the water to go to him. But when he felt the wind, he grew frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Master, save me! Instantly Jesus stretched out his hand and caught hold of him, saying to him, O oh, little faith, why did you doubt? So they climbed into the boat, and the wind lulled. And the men on board fell down before him and said, You are indeed God's son. When they had quite crossed over, they put ashore at Gennesaret. And the men of the place, recognizing him, sent word into all the country round. So they brought all the sick to him, and they entreated him that they might but touch the tassel of his outer garment. And all who did so were restored to perfect health. The end of chapters 8 through 14 of the Gospel according to Matthew from the Weymouth New Testament in Modern Speech. Recording by Mark Penfold.